So next up on the agenda, we have a guest speaker. Unfortunately, uh, Secretary Brian Moran cannot be with us today, but he sent his Deputy Secretary of Public Safety and Homeland Security, Curtis Brown. Um, Curtis Brown most recently served as the Chief Deputy State Coordinator at the Virginia Department of Emergency Management. He has Homeland Security and Emergency Management policy experience at the federal, state, and local levels. Previously, Curtis served as Regional Emergency Management Administrator for the Hampton Roads Planning District Commission, professional staff on the U.S. House of Representatives Committee on Homeland Security, and Senior Special Assistant to the Governor in the Office of Commonwealth Preparedness. Curtis received a Bachelor of Science in Political Science from Radford University, Master of Public Administration from Virginia Tech, and Master of Arts in Homeland Security and Emergency Preparedness from Virginia Commonwealth University three great state schools. He's a graduate of the Virginia Executive Institute, Commonwealth Management Institute, and FEMA's Emergency Management Executive Academy. Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, thank you very much, Elizabeth, and uh, I appreciate you printing off my bio and adding it to the, uh, to the folder here. Usually when Secretary Moran does this, I, I, I don't get the picture in the bio, but um, <laughs> Uh, my apologies uh, uh, for uh, uh, Secretary Moran sends his regrets. Uh, he has a meeting down in uh, uh, Richmond with the new uh, FBI director to discuss the ongoing efforts to combat the opioid addiction and epidemic uh, that's uh, impacting the country and, and the Commonwealth. So he does send his regrets and also I uh, uh, send you greetings on behalf of Governor McCullough. And uh, I'm here, I guess, to talk about the nothing that the state is doing uh, <laughs> related. That was a good opening question there. Uh, but I would uh, say that we're doing a whole lot uh, the course of this administration and working collaboratively related to resilience and embedding resilience into our planning and working collaboratively with all of our partners. Many of you all who are here today who we work with on a number of several, several projects. And so I'll speak on a few. I know we have Secretary uh, Ward uh, coming here later in the day, as well as Secretary Hopkins, who discussed the collaborative cross-secretariat, cross-agency efforts uh, dealing with uh, the impact of sea level rise, uh, climate change, and extreme weather. Uh, the Secretary of Public Safety and Homeland Security Office oversees 11 state agencies, uh, many of those dealing with uh, criminal justice and public safety. I have the opportunity to work uh, on the response side of the, the house. Uh, I have oversight over the National Guard, the Virginia Department of Emergency Management, public, uh, state police, and the Department of Fire Programs. And so anytime we have these large emergencies, uh, all those agencies spin up to support our local governments. And our Virginia Department of Emergency Management works hand in hand with our local governments as they develop uh, their preparedness and mitigation plans. And a key part of our efforts have been embedding the concepts and understanding of resilience and impact of, of sea level rise into our plans. Uh, over three years ago, Governor McCullough appointed Secretary Moran as the Chief Resilience Officer for the Commonwealth. And the main goal of that was to coordinate resilience efforts across state government while synchronizing those efforts with our local governments, federal and private sector partners. And the key word there is coordination, uh, because resilience is truly a team sport, and everyone has a role and responsibility in it, and especially as we deal with the complex challenges uh, related to sea level rise. Uh, we have been successful over the last few years of pushing uh, those, some projects forward and enhancing our capabilities uh, for this real threat uh, by working with many of the partners here in Hampton Roads, including our military uh, partners, and I'll discuss a few of those projects. Uh, in 2015, Virginia competed with 40 uh, other communities nationwide uh, who had been impacted by natural disasters, uh, competed through the U.S. Uh, Department of Housing Urban Development $1 billion resilience grant competition. Uh, it was a very competitive process that had two different rounds, and it required uh, the state to put together an innovative package uh, developing a resilience strategy focused on leveraging uh, all the capabilities of our stakeholders and identifying ways to, to thrive in the face of the different stresses and shocks that we will face. Uh, that includes sea level rise and the onset of extreme weather and powerful hurricanes and so forth. Uh, we work together by pulling together the local governments, 
Uh, we've worked in private industry. Our state agencies uh, had a role, and we were able to put together a very successful package that resulted in a $120 million uh, grant award, which was the largest award given to a state uh, through that grant project. Uh, the success, success of that grant application was based on the ongoing collaboration here in Hampton Roads. And I'm very proud as someone from, from the region to always look at the level of uh, collaboration across the different disciplines, uh, state, federal, local, uh, private industry. I think we're really a model for the country and also for the, for the country. Uh, as you know, Hampton Roads is vital uh, to both the nation's and the Commonwealth's security and economic vitality. Uh, this is why we view sea level rise and coastal flooding in Virginia as critical uh, to homeland security. Uh, and it requires the collaboration across those different levels uh, of government, uh, higher education, uh, the private sector as well. Uh, if you look at the Department of Homeland Security's definition of critical infrastructure, uh, you clearly understand why our military community is so important. Uh, they define critical infrastructure as providing the essential services that underpins American society and serves as a backbone on the nation's economy, security, and health. Uh, and clearly with the largest naval base in the world and all the important uh, activities that goes on here in Hampton Roads, our military community is essential to that. Uh, we have an expanding port, uh, numerous military installations, and also the companies that support our military. And so that clearly indicates uh, these entities, uh, these uh, uh, facilities are critical infrastructure. Uh, therefore, we are committed to enhancing the protection of uh, critical infrastructure uh, by better understanding the threats uh, and developing strategies uh, with the understanding of the impact the sea level rise uh, will have on us here in, in Virginia and the Commonwealth in particular. Uh, one recent example is we have been working with the Area Maritime Security Committee, uh, which is led by the U.S. Coast Guard. It's a partnership uh, by them that includes federal, state, and local government officials, as well as private sector partners uh, involved in maritime. Uh, to recognize the need for critical infrastructure, we recognize the need for critical infrastructure assessment to be, to be conducted for uh, the Hampton Roads region, and particularly the port of Hampton Roads. In 2015, the Commonwealth was awarded a Port Security Grant Program uh, grant award to conduct a comprehensive port risk assessment, uh, an endeavor that has never been undertaken before. This study identified critical infrastructure vital to the port of Hampton Roads and assess the risks that the infrastructure face from an all hazards perspective. And the really neat thing about this uh, assessment was that we really partnered with our private sector partners to really get a good understanding of the footprint of our port, which, which goes from uh, Hampton Roads all the way up to the Richmond area, and bringing them to the table to understand the unique uh, dy dynamics of hazards and threats. Uh, through our understanding of our vulnerabilities and these consequences, we can more accurately target efforts towards mitigation and protection for our infrastructure and thus enhance the resilience of the Port of Hampton Roads, which again is important to our economy and our security. The study also identified the services, utilities, and other dependencies that are critical to infrastructure owners and which they rely on for operations. And I believe one of the last speakers talked about that um, dependency interdependencies across uh, different, uh, different sectors. It helps us to prioritize our response and recovery efforts during emergencies. And so again, I go back to the Department of Emergency Management, who is responsible here in the Commonwealth for our ongoing planning and coordination with our local governments and developing our mitigation plans. So uh, the efforts from this assessment will uh, impact our, our strategies moving forward. Uh, this study was very helpful, again, with bringing us closer together with our military partners, our private sector stakeholders to uh, further enhance uh, our resiliency uh, for uh, the impact of sea level rise and extreme weather. Uh, this uh, helps us promote uh, our physical security, economic security, uh, public health and safety. And so by ensuring the security of our port and its waterways, 
uh, the home of our nation's largest naval base can continue to provide for our nation's uh, security and the, and the state of our economy uh, to thrive. Uh, we always uh, get new reports on the threats and the hazards. I know one came out just uh, recently uh, from Climate Central that talked about the impact of sea level rise here in the Hampton Roads area. Uh, these facts all encourage us to continue to move forward and to collaborate. And so again, I wanna thank uh, the center for having this event here today, uh, which is a great example of the collaboration that's needed in particular for our, our military partners. Um, these facts along with other studies encourage us to continue. Uh, we will not re retreat or surrender uh, from this threat. Uh, the Hampton Roads will stay, uh, will continue to thrive uh, with our, all of our partners. Uh, therefore, we need to look ahead to what we can do over the next uh, several decades as we deal with this uh, increasing threat to leverage our collective efforts, science and technology to adapt and mitigate uh, to the effects of coastal flooding and sea level rise uh, to enhance our, our, our security uh, and to protect our people and uh, our critical infrastructure. So again, I wanna thank everyone for your, your time uh, today and all your efforts to collaborate. Uh, we do have several other projects, but I, I know I'm standing in the way for, in, of y'all breaks. I don't wanna uh, talk too much about those, but a lot of those relate to planning, uh, working with our uh, congressional delegation uh, related to funding. Uh, I know the last panel talked about uh, funding that comes available after uh, emergencies. A lot of those grants are mitigation grants that get directed to the Virginia Department of Emergency Management and are available to our state governments. Uh, last year, uh, we were impacted by Hurricane Matthew, for instance, and some mitigation funding, if it doesn't get snatched, will be available for our local governments uh, for uh, mitigation planning. Uh, one thing that we have heard from the new uh, head of FEMA is that he would like to change the process of mitigation funding uh, to move it to the front end versus to the back end. Uh, why do we wait until we have a disaster to provide this funding when we already understand the threat uh, that exists? So uh, there is some hope. Uh, we're gonna continue to engage them on that and uh, continue to move forward. But over the course of the McCulloch administration, I think we've embedded resilience into what we do, uh, embedded it into our state agencies, and I, I see a, a great future in terms of what we'll do moving forward. So. Uh, with that, Elizabeth, I'm happy to take any questions, but I know we got a break. That's right. <laughs> well, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.